All right, guys, welcome back to another Forza video. Today, we are around VIR in the Manufacturer Sports Car Series, uh, and this race pretty much had it all. Uh, it had mixed conditions, which I wasn't expecting at all. We had a couple of drivers at the front, first and second, who were pretty quick, and we had pretty much a three-way battle uh, till the end of the race. We made a couple of mistakes, but uh, we still got very close at the end. I will let you know what position we quite got. Uh, but yeah, I wasn't really expecting rain in this race and you can also see in the bottom right hand side For the first sort of I think it will maybe lap or two laps. We didn't have the gear uh, ratios or the gear sort of um, Selection or whatever you call it um, Most because I think it was a glitch to be honest with you um, And uh, I have no idea which clue uh, clue which uh, gear I was in you can see here I was changing camera views in case it just sort of switched back uh, But it turns out it didn't and uh, basically I had to count uh, my gears for the first couple of laps. We can see we had a, a pretty mega start, we were up into P5 and we're not even uh, near the end of the lap around VIR which is uh, pretty good to uh, do. You can see there's a few cars ahead of us here, I think 78219 uh, is one of the fast guys and there's also another one, uh, I don't, I'm not quite sure which one it is there. Uh, we can see we're just changing camera views once again because I, I was pretty scared because I was like what gear am I in uh, I'm not the greatest at counting and uh, yeah I do end up uh, solving it uh, I think I do press the is it the telemetry uh, the bottom arrow uh, as you can see in the bottom left I think I press that next lap and then it ends up popping back up onto the screen so another little glitch in the game this was pre-patch um, if anyone wants to know and uh, I think the patch has actually come out now well the uh, Norge life is out so I'm pretty sure all the updates and the bug fixes are out as well and I will say that um, there isn't I'm still experiencing quite a few bugs uh, in the game um, I'm still experiencing the sort of FPS drop um, which I, it seems like I'm the only person experiencing this um, I don't know how it happens I don't know if it's to do with a 4k monitor or it's just a game problem or Xbox Series X problem I'm not quite sure um, but I'm still getting that. I'm not getting it as often now. I'm probably getting it once, you know, once every maybe like 15 races, 10, 15 races, but it's still annoying sometimes when you do get it on a certain track or a certain race. Um, I will have to like press the pause menu quite a few times just to get rid of it. So it doesn't happen all that often. And you know, like every 15 races, I probably say 10, 15 races. Uh, and when it does happen, it happens a few times. So yeah, that's still in the game. Um, I'm not quite sure if there's any other little bugs. I've, I know, I've noticed some sort of black screen issues here and there where you're supposed to go into a menu and it, menu and it just turns into a, a sort of a, a black screen. Uh, but apart from that, there's not many other bre game breaking bugs I've seen there. We can see we uh, use the telemetry there and the gear ratios magically pop back up and we're now in gear five so we don't have to count them anymore. You can see the guys in second and first. These are the guys we're going to be battling. Uh, for the win until the end of the race and uh, they're very quick these guys I will say we have a very good battle um, with a lot of them both of them are quick none of them really gets away from each other um, I wasn't really expecting the rain once it comes and that's when I, I think I made a couple of mistakes but we do end up catching him up uh, once again so we're coming to the end of lap 2 here we're just trying to get onto the back of him here in the brown. we can see we're level 50 at this point so I've done quite a few laps in it at this point and uh, yeah, like I said in the previous video, I was doing quite a bit of setup work on the car, putting a load of oversteer in, which isn't the right thing to do. Um, oh, something in my throat there. Um, yeah, like I was saying with the setup work, I'm, I were gonna do setup work. Um, I did a lot of some research after that. I made that video later that night. And yeah, I did a few of the guides and it does work to some degree but I still think there's some things which you know you can put into the car which will just make it faster and to be honest we are I'm not over that fussed about doing that um, it's only for sort of re, uh, re, league racing I can get my words out it's only for league racing that sort of stuff doing the, uh, all the setup work and you know I don't know if there's any sort of things you can put into the car to make it really fast I'm guessing you can um, but it's just sort of having to find that. I could sort of join the Forza Auto Tunes Discord and see what there is in there. Uh, but to be honest with you, I'm not really that fussed. I think I'll just sort of 
download someone else's setup. I don't think the game is ultra realistic with um, you know making setups work. Um, I think I'll leave that sort of thing to sort of ACC and iRacing and maybe in the in the future if we go down that avenue and in uh, making videos on there uh, because I think their setup work is a bit more realistic compared to these sort of sim arcadey uh, games where it's just you can um, do setup work which is somewhat realistic but there's still things which you can just add to the car which will just make it faster which doesn't make sense at all like you could probably add 100% uh, acceleration on the diff um, as we can see there into turn one we outbreak ourselves there and uh, we're going to the side of first place there. We seem like a bit of an idiot there, a little bit of a rammer. And uh, I will put my hands up. I made uh, a little bit of a mistake there. That was my fault. And I think we do end up making up uh, another mistake once the rain comes. But luckily enough, no one got too hurt there. We can see they're both still in first and second. It was only us who came out uh, worse than that. Uh, we just outbreaked ourselves into the breaking zone. So, yeah, like I was saying with the setup, um, yeah, I'm just going to sort of give up on that. Um, I prefer to do realistic setups. You know, I don't want little things you can put into the car. Like uh, I know they've put in the is it the roll centre uh, suspension geometry they've added to uh, this game, which I'm guessing you can probably do something in that because that provides a lot of sort of rotation you can get in the car, and there's a lot of sort of other stuff you can do with it as well. So I'm guessing you could probably do a lot in that, but it's just at the end of the day I want it to be realistic. I don't want to be uh, doing these sort of setups which doesn't make sense so that's my sort of take I'm going to be doing uh, on that uh, as well and I also found out I'll, I'll sort of tell you a little bit about YouTube and uh, uploading that sort of stuff and the analytics uh, as you know you might not know I do shorts alongside this so I upload shorts or clip it of the sort of races you've seen here into sort of 10-15 second shorts and then uploading it on to uh, the platform on to uh, YouTube shorts and I thought, um, I don't know why I didn't actually take a, a bit of bigger look or a deeper look into it. Um, uh, one of my most like popular videos on this, on Forza Motorsport, um, it's not like uh, a massively popular one. I think it got like 700 views, but compared to these ones, these ones are, are getting like 50 views. And I thought it was down to the YouTube shorts. I thought, because it had quite a decent YouTube shorts, I think it got like 5,000 views or 6,000 views. I thought a lot of the views were transferring over onto that video but it seemed like it wasn't like I, I looked at the analytics and it showed that you can use it as a related video so when people see the shorts uh, you, the full video will pop up the bottom saying if you want to click it or not and I used that and I thought that's where a lot of my views were coming from and it turned out it wasn't I think I only got about five views from the actual YouTube shorts onto the main long vig video um, a lot of it came from um, the home feed, the YouTube recommendations, and I was so confused as to like, how? Because that video is the exact same to every other, um, apart from the, you know, the title. And then I also saw the thumbnail, the thumbnail is a lot different, so you'll see for yesterday's video and this video, the thumbnail, thumbnail is going to change to sort of a bog standard screenshot. I still do a little work in Photoshop with it. I still bump up uh, some of the colours and change the sort of pers per perspective so it's a bit more zoomed in and uh, picking a, a sort of particular one it's not a YouTube recommended thumbnail um, I'll pick the thumbnail to sort of suit the title and uh, yeah I'm going to sort of do that style from now on it's a bit more authentic uh, I feel like and um, for some reason um, I did like four videos with that style of thumbnail and they all did really well they're like my best performing videos out of the lot even though they're not that good performing compared to like other people's channels but you know the best one got like 700 views um, a couple of them got like 200 views and one of them got like 150 views um, and then the ones after it I started to do a bit more work on the thumbnails once again and they all got like 50 views so I'm not quite sure how it works with the thumbnails I, I feel like the other ones are a lot more I put in a bit more work I feel like they look more appealing but they just don't work for some reason people don't uh, decide to click on them compared to the sort of raw sort of screen grab from the, from the race um, as we're, we're seeing here where it's, it's wet, wet conditions now it just turned wet over one lap you can see we made a mistake here uh, again we can see the top three one miles ahead of everyone else uh, these top two guys were pretty quick and uh, we do we don't end up falling off too much from this point onwards uh, we do end up closing up uh, at the end of the race so don't worry 
we're not just going to be in this sort of limbo mode as usual where we overtake a few people and we, we're sat in no man's land. We do end up taking uh, or, or closing up to them um, by the end of the race. But yeah, well, like I say, with the thumbnails, I'm going to carry on doing the odd style of just sort of screen grabs from the video. Um, I'm not quite sure how or, or why that is just sort of better for people to click on. Um, I have no idea. I don't know if it seems a bit more appealing. I'd say it's sort of equal and sort of appeal compared to my old style of thumbnails as we get a point one penalty there for losing about a second on the grass there. So great stuff, Forza. And um, yeah, I'm not quite sure how it works. Um, I'm just going to give that go, um, that thumbnail style, uh, a go and uh, just see sort of what happens. I might tweak it a little bit here and there, but yeah, I'm a bit confused on why that sort of works. So you'll be seeing that from now on. I guess it's sort of to do with the authenticity. Um, I know there's a guy called I Suck at Driving. He's quite popular. I think he's one of the most popular creators on Forza Motorsport who uh, sort of does similar style videos where it's just sort of core gameplay of the races he does. He doesn't speak in his videos. And I think he actually uses a keyboard as well which is absolutely crazy that he, that he uses that uh, to drive on the game. That's very skillful, I will say. And uh, yeah, he does quite well and he does them sort of thumbnails as well where it's just sort of screen grabs from the race. So for some reason, I think people just sort of like that style. It's more authentic. Uh, I guess it might be a little bit more appealing or intriguing um, and that sort of stuff. So I'll be using these screen grabs. Uh, as more often and uh, we're on lap 7 now we can see we close up about 2-3 seconds uh, in the last lap we can see I think we have a bit more pace compared to the top 2 guys we are level 50 in this car so that might be a reason why and uh, yeah I was surprised I was actually this quick in the, in the rain I wasn't expecting it at all and I think this was the first race I actually drove in the rain and uh, as you know I put a lot of oversteer in this car and uh, yeah that's not a great combi combination when you put oversteer and wet uh, together um, a lot of the time it doesn't turn out into a good um, sort of end result uh, as you see and we did make a couple of mistakes so um, we do have a bit of pace it seems like um, we're not falling off uh, we've gained about a second on second so far this lap you see I think they're both battling each other, each other so I think they're both taking a bit of time uh, off each other. I'm guessing they're gonna go uh, for the lead on the last lap. That's what I usually do if I'm stuck behind someone, and you've got like sort of sp sp like spare time, a free space compared to the guys behind. So we're, like 40 seconds uh, in front of the guy behind. So um, if we're in first and second or second and third, and we've got a bit of gap, I'll just put a bit of pressure on. To be honest, I won't go for the move because in the end, if you can force them into a mistake in the end out of that the end result you, you're just going to be sort of a bit more ahead they're going to lose a bit of confidence and uh, you're gonna, it's going to give you a bit more of a gap so that's what I prefer to do if you've got the time to put pressure on put pressure on because if they make a mistake that's going to be a lot better than you overtaking them that's just sort of my little theory uh, on that and uh, yeah we're coming to the beginning of lap 8 we're still close up a little bit you can see where they're kind of in sight now um, we just need to get onto the back of them here and uh, closing down through VIR. It's very challenging around VIR uh, in these wet conditions, um, especially the track's very narrow. Fortunately, it wasn't on the bad layout, even though I think most lay layouts are bad around here. I don't mind this layout uh, for some odd reason. I just don't like it when it turns right here and it goes all into like the twisty stuff. And there's like one corner on the, uh, there's like four or five layouts, I think, around here. There's one corner on one of the layouts where it's just like a hidden corner and you can't even see it. And uh, it's very awkward to sort of get right. So, yeah, them sort of inside layouts I don't like at all. Um, but, yeah, in terms of, like, the new update, what's come out with the Norge Life, I've been looking on Steam charts, and I don't think a lot of people have actually come back to the game. So that's quite worrying to see, uh, I will say. Uh, like I was saying, if by the end of the year the game is not in a great state, not a lot of people are coming back, you know, it's sort of in the state it is now then I'll probably move over to Gran Turismo. Um, but yeah, it's not looking great. I looked on Steam charts. I think for the last 30 days, it's been around 550 players on average. Um, and I looked for the past couple of days, it's gone up slightly. I think it's like 560, but still, that's not enough for a sort of big update they have produced. Um, 
Which is somewhat worrying to see that um, a lot of these live service games aren't working. We're seeing it with Skull and Bones as well at the moment where they've released a, a, a live service game which is just absolutely terrible. Is it Ubisoft I think have released it because everyone's comparing it to Black Flag which came out what like 10 years ago and that I will say I recommend that as well that's an uh, amazing pirate game and that game 10 years ago is a lot better than the one they've produced now there's a lot more content in it and stuff and I think you've seen that as a trend with these sort of triple A titles and these big sort of development companies game development uh, companies that they're, they're producing live service games with nothing in no content and a lot of the mechanics and gameplay is just, you know, stuff in games 10 years ago, with less than stuff in games 10 years ago. And uh, I think um, some of these AAA companies are taking advantage of um, these live service games, of producing a, a, a rubbish foundation and then sort of over the years adding to it. And uh, yeah, I don't think it's, it's quite working because we're seeing with Forza, not a lot of people are coming back. So we might see that with Skull and Bones as well. We'll just have to wait and see over the next couple of months if, if a few more people coming back. I know it's still early doors. It's, doors. it's only been like a week since the update come out and it's not the biggest update as of yet. There's a couple more which are going to be bigger. Uh, but I guess we'll come back to the race and it's coming to the end of the race now on the last lap. You can see we made a little bit of a mistake earlier on onto the grass. I think so did Seven who was also leading the race. So I think this guy... He's going to be a bit angry as well. We get a bit of a warning for avoidable contact. And we do need to get past him because we we have a, a point two penalty over him. But he does cut the corner there and he will get a penalty there. He has got a point eight penalty. So we need to be within point two at the line in order to get second place. It's going to be close. I think that car has better straight line speed. We're going to cut the corner, cut the track uh, as short as possible. And across the line and it will be just about enough to take second place by about five hundredths of a second. So that was very close at the end. And uh, I hope you enjoyed that sort of mixed conditions uh, race.